Good morning. Good morning, Stacy. I am here with Betty Lamar. I am so honored to have the chance to chat with you. I cannot believe it. I have known you for quite a number of years and doing these lives has been so much fun because I'm able to just pull people and go, hey, let's do this. Let's talk about what you're up to. Um, and so welcome everyone who is joining us this morning. Our guest today is Betty Lamar. Uh, before I get to Betty, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we do. As you know, those of you who have been joining us, we are chatting uh, every week and we are connecting with individuals that are bringing new information around diversity, inclusion. And uh, today we are talking about mentoring and empowerment. And so I'm really excited to invite Betty in because Betty has a, an organization that really is helping so many young girls. Um, and I'm gonna let Betty introduce herself and talk a little bit about it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, Stacey. We, we have um, known each other for quite some time and mutual respect. I mean, we are uh, Pepperdine alums and I think we met, you were one of the founding members of the, uh, uh, of the MBA, yeah, National what, Association of uh, MBA Women. <laughs> uh, I know, with so many, but always celebrating women. So I am the CEO and founder of an organization called Empower Her Institute. And we focus on serving teen girls in marginalized communities by uh, providing curriculum, which is embedded in the school day. It's part of uh, a class called the Empower Her Girls Academy. And we're serving 400 girls in four schools here in Los Angeles, and they're all in low-income communities. Wonderful, wonderful. And so I just remember when you came to, you know, uh, National Association of Women MBAs, you did some work with us there. And I know Paige, who was on our board, has served as a mentor for you. Uh, yeah. Um, and, you know, we were able to, to make some great connections there. And so good morning, everyone who's coming in. I'm seeing Simone and uh, I want to pronounce this correctly, Gahanan. Uh, and so good morning to all of you. We are going to um, drop the link to Betty's organization, which is empower.org. Um, and there you'll be able to take a look at all the great work that Betty is doing. Um, but what I wanted to just kind of ask is, you know, Betty, what inspired you to start Empower? Yeah, thank you, uh, Stacy, for asking that. And it's it's really quite reflective when I um, think about what inspired me because it was really three seminal moments in my in my life that contributed to me starting Empower. Her first of all, I grew up in Compton, California, and I was a was pregnant at my high school graduation. So that was number one. Uh, number two, along the way, uh, I was inspired to go back to school by someone who saw more in me than I saw in myself. And that, of course, both of those things were life changing for me. And that, as a result of overcoming the challenge of being a teen mom, I did finish college uh, and then started work in corporate America. I was working for IBM, which I never even imagined that in my wildest dreams, a little girl in Compton would be working for a corporation like that. And then along the way, the third thing that that changed was after spending over over 20 years in corporate America, I decided to leave corporate America because I wanted to do the work that was purposeful and that had a bigger meaning for me than just myself. And I moved to South Africa for four years. So it was all of those experiences that actually informed me and a small group of women and friends of mine that started Empower Her in 2003. That's wonderful. And I think that that's the, the part that we think about, right, is how important it is for someone to have a mentor, right? Somebody who encourages you. And we talked about this um, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Guided Compass. Uh, but at, at that time, we were talking about how important it is for people in the education, um, you know, who are in education to be guides for individuals and help them to broaden their horizons rather than keep them in their place. And it sounds like you had somebody in your life that did that for you. And now you're giving back uh, and doing that for others. Yeah, that's true. What happens along the way, Stacy, really, is that 
you know, we don't think that we're doing anything extraordinary because we just think we're just one average person and we're not doing anything special. And the fact that I had made it from a teen, from being, living in Compton as a teen mom, being the first in my family of eight children, I'm number seven, to graduate college and then to be in, in the corporate environment it was just me just, you know, just paddling that boat, right? I didn't think that it was anything special until people started asking, well, how did, like, how did you do it? How, how did you get out? It was like, get out, <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and then you start to realize how different your, your life is and how different your life could have been had you not had the serendipity and the, uh, the grace of others along, along the way. And so, I started to realize that my life was really mirrored all of the girls that we're serving today. And that is that they are bright, they're brilliant, and they don't even know what's possible for them. And so just to have us providing mentors to them, having us provide the program and exposures to them, allow them to, to dream bigger dreams and to imagine greater possibilities for themselves that they just don't see in their neighborhoods. Completely. I think it was your organization. I might have been at a meeting or maybe you were talking about it that where you told the story of a young girl who had never been to the beach, even though she lived in Compton. And what is that like miles, mere miles from the yeah, beach? And right. I was just astonished. I was like, wait, you know, and so it's just individuals, people don't understand how you can really get locked into a bubble. It's like for somebody who lives I don't even know. What is that like? Eight miles <laughs> from yeah, the beach? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not far. It's yeah, not far. And to, and to never have have made it to the, to see the ocean, right? Right. Like, so to be able to have that kind of impact and just to open people's minds up um, is 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 so important. You know what you're doing. I think you know with with the rampant um, racial inequality. How do you specifically help girls to become leaders? So understand a couple of things. One is that we have been building leaders since we started this in school program uh, back in 2012, because we start we uh, the organization was founded in 2003, but we started the in school uh, delivery in 2012. And so we have been building the spirit. We, we work with the girls we're building from the inside out. You know, I, in, in one of my other lives, I was an executive coach. And so one of the things that we recognize is that, uh, and also what the schools are recognizing now is that in conjunction with academics, you have to address the social emotional uh, needs of the students in order for them to be present to learn. And so in terms of leadership, we have seen the shy girl in the back of the room in seventh grade turn into this wonderful young woman who is willing and ha is courageous enough to speak before 300 people at our gala. And so when you talk about how do we build leadership, it's, it's one step at a time. It is exposing the girls to mentors who are role models. It, and that allows them to see what's possible. We have a mantra at Empower Her when we talk about our girls, and that is if they can see it, they can be it. And so they are exposed to lawyers, to doctors, to entrepreneurs, so women uh, firefighters. They're exposed to women from so many different disciplines that give them that sense of what's possible and who and who they can become. That's part of the leadership. But more importantly, to your to your question, we we are also making a pivot in our uh, in our programming, and we are incorporating more advocacy and social and, a to, and topics on social justice. And the reason that we're doing that is that we want our girls to understand that they can be participants in solving the problem and not, not, not be victims. And so, yes, yeah, maybe we are uh, looking to, to give them more agency, if you will, uh, as part of this cause called racial and gender equality. That is why really I see you've got some individuals who are um, 
uh, dialing in from Nigeria and from the Netherlands. I want to say hello to them as well. And somebody okay. said um, that you should meet Jane Phillips. And I'm like, you already know Jane Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Jane Phillips? Who is that? I could have, do you not know Jane? I don't remember. I don't know the name. Okay, so then maybe I know both of you. Maybe you do need to meet Jane Phillips. All right, <laughs> I I remember because I think I feel like Jane has worked with the National Association of Women MBAs as well, and she does a very similar thing. She okay. um, has been helping young girls in the South Bay. Um, okay, and so I could have sworn you two knew each other, but apparently that's not the case. So I will make sure to make that introduction <laughs> after okay, today's you. live. Thank you. So whoever says. You should meet Jane Phillips. Thank you for that because I thought they already knew each other. Yeah, awesome. no, we're we're all in this together, and we really, you know, I've worked to work with a lot of partner agencies to bring uh, to to bring experiences and value to our students. So I would love it. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, and you mentioned, you know, the racial injustice. It, it's so important I, to to be able to, um, as you said, have agency. In, um, in taking control of that, right? Taking back control of your own destiny. And, yeah. um, you know, so here I'll do a plug, right? For my unconscious bias course, because I'm always telling everyone, watch it. Because what I'm finding is so many individuals, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're male, female, you know, everyone is looking at it and saying, wow, it's 24 minutes but it has really made me think. You packed a lot into this. And it's making people start to think about their bias and how they show up to others and how mm -hmm. they impact others. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what you're doing is you are, you know, impacting in a positive way, right? Like our goal is to make sure we're not impacting in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And the bias training talks about that. Like what are these things that we can be checking to make sure that we're not doing? Um, and so, I think it is really great that we have the opportunity to uh, be able to um, introduce what you're doing to the world. And so um, even though I know right now you're focused in the Los Angeles area, the impact is global because these That's girls, right. they are becoming leaders. They go off That's to right. college and they That's go right. do great things in yes. their respective areas. And so I think that that is, um, is so important. Um, I think, how would you say that your organization has changed to address some of the, the new realities amidst the, the, the racial tensions? Or do you think it hasn't really changed much at all and you're still doing what you do? Well, we're doing what we do. And then as, as I mentioned, we are pivoting to make sure that we are including more focus. We, we want it to not be unspoken about racial injustice. Uh, the demographics of our of our student body is we have 85 percent latinx uh students and 15 percent african-american and so when you have that kind of racial makeup you and and then when you look at our mentors most of our mentors come from different social economic backgrounds than our students so we have a tremendous opportunity to allow and create an environment so that our girls begin to understand and value differences uh, and also so that they understand that they have more in common than they do in differences. So it is definitely not too young when they're in seventh grade and eighth grade or 13 and 14 years old for us to begin to have that dialogue so that they are empowering each other. And what we really focus on too, Stacy, is building a safe environment and a sense of sisterhood. And that sisterhood, again, we want them to understand the intersectionality of race and how black girls may be treated differently than Latinx girls and that they need to all advocate for each other in that sisterhood. I think that's really great because I think that helps um, to advance, you know, black women and Latina women into these leadership roles. And as you said before, it helps with their agency, but it also helps them to be allies to others. That's um, right. Do you talk about allyship when you're working with the girls? That has not been our terminology. You know, that, that, that those are new terms since, since COVID-19 <laughs> and all of the other racial, racial unrest that we've had. And that was like in March, right? When we all had to leave, leave the physical school site and start, figure out how to serve our, our girls virtually. And so, yeah, I'm sure we will have that kind of language 
uh, in our dialogue uh, this year in the school in the school environment. Definitely. So you mentioned the mentors. What are the qualifications to become a mentor? How can they get involved? What does that process look like? So uh, we just actually finished our first uh, mentor training this past Saturday. We have another one coming up September 19th. And the requirements are that, first of all, you have to be 21 years old and you have to be uh, female. Uh, and then there are a number of, I mean, you have to go through uh, a live scan. We ensure the safety of our, of our students by uh, doing screening and back checks. And then uh, a training so that you can be prepared to go into the classroom. The other thing is that I just want being very transparent because a lot of people are looking for uh, mentor opportunities on Saturdays, weekends, and after work. Our program is part of the school day. And so mentors commit to serving once a month, one hour in the, mil in the middle of the day. So you have to be able to manage your schedule. Gotcha, gotcha. And so how many mentors would you say you have worked with over the years? Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. Um, so let me just say that in our core right now, we have um, at least 100 mentors. Wow. And so, so that's each year, right? And so... We have we have worked with thousands, I would say, at this point. Uh, but right now we have at least 100 and we're still recruiting because we have 400 girls. And with it being virtual, we can have more mentors because you don't all have to fit in the classroom. We can fit you in the virtual classroom. And so, yes, and it's a, a tremendous experience for our mentors. I will tell you that they feel like they get more from this experience than the girls do. Because not only are they giving back and they feel like they're lifting, but they get to also reflect on their trials and their triumphs. They also get to uh, develop their leadership skills, their listening skills. And a lot of what, what they uh, develop in terms of their leadership are things that they may not be able to do on their jobs. So uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to serve and to give back. Well, and that is great. And you make a great point about it being virtual. So for those of you that are not in the LA area and want to participate, Betty's got you. I got <laughs> you. Can you. Reach I got out. you. <laughs> oh, that's until, awesome. Yeah, until things change, right. <laughs> then we need you in the classroom. Because there's nothing, there's nothing like the high touch. There, I mean, it builds trust so much quicker. That is true. That is true. So how else can people support your work, Betty? So we have a number of volunteer. So in addition to um, volunteering as a mentor, uh, we also have uh, volunteers at on our advisory board. We have a volunteer board, a group of amazing and dynamic women uh, that people love to be in the company of. Of course, we are a publicly funded organization, so we are not uh, financed by any big endowments. Uh, it is individuals like uh, yourselves with small donations that we provide the services that we do uh, to our girls. And so donations are absolutely welcome. We have an event coming up uh, October 8th called our, Icon, our virtual Icon Pathmaker Award. And I am delighted to say that we have two amazing honorees, and these are champions of change. These are ladies uh, we have. Uh, we will be honoring Monique Morris, who uh, created the Push Out documentary that talks about how Black girls are criminalized in education. And we also have Dawn Lewis, who is the uh, iconic uh, actor, producer, musician, uh, who's also been very supportive of the work of Empower Her and so many other organizations in, in the Los Angeles area and beyond. So uh, you guys, you can certainly uh, plan to participate on October 8th. You can also uh, help us fundraise for that event. And again, that's virtual, so, you, so there are no limits, <laughs> no boundaries. Isn't that wonderful? That, it really <laughs> is wonderful. Um, so Betty, you know, I really want to say thank you. This has been great. What, there will be a recording of this. We'll be able to spread it far and wide. We'll be able to 
uh, let others see all the great work that you are doing. And I'm so glad that you were able to get up this morning. For us on the West Coast, it is early. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that you were able to join me today. And uh, despite a couple of technical difficulties, I know my sound isn't great today either. Um, but we are going. We always power through. So we do. Uh, we do. Everybody. I really thank appreciate you, Stacy. I'm glad that we got re reconnected and that we were me able too. to let people see the great work that you're doing. Because I think right now, part of what we're talking about in you know racial inequality, social justice, part of this is making sure that we start early and that yes. you are coming in and making such a wonderful impact and so i think it's the work that you do is so needed so impactful and so anyone that can assist that wants to be a mentor that wants to donate that wants to participate on your board please reach out to betty um, we have provided you with the uh, link to her website you can connect with her on linkedin and um we hope that you will continue. Well, we know, I don't have to hope. I know that you will continue to impact lives for many years to come. <laughs> well, thank you, Stacy. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the work that you're doing and continue su continued success for you. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. We will be back next week, live 8 a.m. Pacific.